Hey everyone out there, this is Garden State Growing. My name is Eric, and today we're gonna to be putting onions in, our, in my garden. I've got... <laughs> two different types, three different varieties, and I'm gonna show you how I plant each one of them. Now I started this yesterday, <coughs> so uh, I'm just gonna give you a, a run through. It got too late by the time uh, I was getting ready to record, so I didn't want to record at night when it was freezing out. So what I have here is my Tokyo Long Bunting onions. Now, when I planted these and I planted them in their little cells, I planted about 10 to 15 onions in each one of those cells. And I just took the plug out because these are bunching onions and they don't mind being grown together. So I just took a cell out and plopped it in the ground and buried it up. I didn't want to bury, you only bury up to the white. You don't want to go any higher than that or else you'll get dirt in the leaves and that'll cause the inside of the onion to rot. We don't want that. So I moved the mulch away and I just took the plugs and boop, 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 boop. I popped them into the ground and that's it for my bunching onions. And I'm just gonna let them grow like that. And I could come off, come out and I could top them off and take some of the green from the top or I could just let them continue to grow. And when they're ready to harvest, uh, just pull them all out. I believe it's around 60 days, something like that. I might be wrong. You can comment in the section below if I am, uh, till they're ready to harvest. But then I moved on and I started doing my white Spanish onion, okay? And that's what you see, I grew them in this little Chinese food container, okay? And I threw the whole packet of seed in there and it all grew like this. They're very bunched up, they're very crowded. I'm not gonna plant these like bunching onions because these are bulb onions. But what you can do is you can go through and find the nice ones that you want to plant like see like this one's a little spindly and I don't really necessarily want to plant that one so I'm gonna put it aside same thing with these two they're a little spindly and I mean these are perfectly good for planting except where there's just much better examples in here so like here we go let me find a really here we go here's a and I'm just going to tease it out nice and gently not break the roots and you could do that see how it's gotten two nice long leaves on it and a robust little bulb at the bottom and decent roots they don't mind you messing around with the roots onions are fine like that so i'm going to take these and i'm going to separate them to the ones i definitely want to plant to and i'm going to make what i call a backup plant uh, where I'll just put them back into the cup and if I have more room and I want to plant more onions of this variety I can go right ahead and I can pick up the best of my backups see if it only has one leaf on it I'm not gonna plant it and if it's really thin if the bulb is really thin I'm not gonna plant that either well they'll go into my backup pile but see like that one two nice big leaves all the different leaves that they have all that that come up those are all going to be different layers of that onion so i'm going to separate these all out and now when i say the the backup onions make sure you don't throw them away because one they're edible right now you can chop them up and put them in eggs they they act like chives or spring onions. Uh, you can you can put them on uh, salmon or we'll use them for however you would use any other green onion. Uh, today is April 12th. It's Easter Sunday. So I'm definitely going to find a use for these uh, regardless of whether I plant them or not. See, and they just come apart nice. Look, at that's a beautiful one. They just come apart nice and easily. Yeah, you can use the ones that you don't plant uh, to eat and cook right now. See, look at that one's really thin and spindly. I don't want that one. But that one is beautiful right next to it. See? And you're going to get enough. And this, planting them like this assures that you're going to have enough to plant. And just like the garlic, I am going to plant these in between my tomato plants. Uh, onion roots are very shallow. 
so they're not going to interfere with my tomato roots and their leaves are very thin and spindly so they're not going to block a tremendous amount of <coughs> airflow that is uh going between my up oh, see i ripped the roots off of that one no good don't just throw these on the ground willy-nilly because some of them will catch root in your lawn or just a random part of your garden and uh, if you're not paying attention they will go to seed on the second season uh, onions are biannual so this year they won't go to seed but next year they will and if you're not paying attention your entire backyard will be an onion field I don't know if you've ever seen a wild onion field in the uh, out in the forest or, or prairie or anything. All right, guys, I just want to show you real quick. This is not, see, there is my garden where I'm planting my onions, right? But right here behind it is wild onions. Now, I don't know where these exactly came from. They might have came from... A plant that I planted and let go to seed you know I'm not exactly sure that's just a weed but let me show you let's see if I can get this out I already pulled one up let me get this big one here Try not to damage it too much. All right. <laughs> so there we go. Still has some roots on it. I don't know what type of onion this is, but it looks like a good onion. And uh, you know what? Boop. That's going in the ground with my other because I ran out of the uh, the white Spanish sweet. And see that one? I kind of broke the leaves off of that one. I don't care. Uh, it's going to be fine. Uh, let's see if I can get another one. I'm sure I can. Oh, here we go. Holy cow. It's like a vine. Okay, <laughs> that one's crazy. It's like a vine. Look how long those leaves are. I guess I don't have to worry about how deep I plant that one. So that's going in that hole right there. Boop. Oops, I gotta show you. And I'm gonna let them grow and I'm gonna see what happens with those. See, this is, look at all these little onions that I got here. See, this is what I'm talking about. If you let them just go willy nilly, they will try to take over your yard, which I don't care because they're edible. And if I'm going to try to plant them, I might as well accidentally have them too. So, see, little, little cocktail onions right now. I'm going to bring these inside. I'm going to eat them. But they, they will proliferate very well. That's why I say don't waste them. Bring them inside. Eat them. Now, to plant these, I'm going to show you. I already planted, like I said, I got my bunching onions over there. I got a couple in here. But I decided that I'm not going to do just one row of onions in between my tomatoes because there's so much room in here that I could put three or four, actually three. I feel safe with three rows in between. So let me put this down for right now. I'll move with these. These are my Utah yellow sweet. These are my Spanish white sweet. And I have one row to about here. I didn't get to the back of it yet. And all I'm going to do is off center. I'm going to make a hole. I'm going to move some of this mulch out of the way. I'm going to make a hole. Use my trusty marker. 
pick out a good one. I try to make the hole a little bit deeper. I make it deeper than I want it to be. See, I go almost the entire red, three or four inches. And that's just so, because it's difficult to get these roots in there. So I'm able to twist it a little bit, push it down, push it down, twist it a little bit. I don't want to use my pen to jam those roots down in there because you wind up breaking them off and damaging them. So I put them in there and then what I do is I just collapse the dirt around it, but then I'm going to pull it back up. to the depth that I want till I start seeing some white of the onion and then that's the depth that I want them at. I'm gonna bring you in to show you a closer look. All right, as you can see, I just made a hole. They're kind of off center. I want them to be at least four inches apart because they are gonna bulb out. Okay, create this nice bulb. And let me pick out a good one. Here's a good one. And I'm gonna twist it down. I'm gonna twist these roots a little bit just to get them down into the hole and then just try to get them in there a little bit there we go that's fine like I said I'm gonna collapse the dirt around the onion but see it's planted way too shallow I don't like how close the split of those leaves are so I'm gonna pull it up till I see a little bit of white on that onion the soil is away from that split. I don't want to get any soil in that split right there. And that's it. So I pulled it up and now the roots are draping down and the onion is fine. I'm going to move on to another spot. I kind of veered off too close to these tomatoes. I kind of like went that way when I was doing this yesterday. So here we go. I got a nice spot over here. Like I said, I'm going to open that up nice. Get those roots in there a little bit. And collapse the hole. The depth is looking pretty good. I'm just going to raise it up just a little bit. Straighten it up a little bit. Press it in there. And that's it. Ta-da! Yellow one. Okay, so that's it. That's onions in my garden, in my tomatoes. And with my tomatoes, like I said, uh, these serve multiple purposes. They, you know, it one, I'm using my space to the maximum. I'm not wasting any space in my garden. Uh, two, they're not going to interfere with my tomatoes. They're not going to interfere with the roots or the airflow, which is so important to tomatoes to prevent blight. Um, and other diseases. And three, alliums put off an odor that pests do not like. And they will help to protect. They are a great companion plant for tomatoes. They will help protect against pests. Uh, uh, if you saw my garlic video, I, I mentioned some other ones. You have garlic, which is an allium that grows really well with tomatoes. I hear marigolds are fantastic marigolds uh, especially the french marigolds apparently they help prevent nematodes so i might pick myself up a marigold plant and throw it in a tomato garden um and of course basil basil is a terrific um uh, companion plant for tomatoes from what i'm told they help prevent uh the tomato hornworm the tomato hornworm or the butterfly that lays the eggs for the the moth actually that lays the eggs for the tomato hornworm does not like basil and they will stay away so that's how you protect your tomatoes even though mine got decimated by you know transplant shock unfortunately so if you like this video if you like the content in it hit that uh, subscribe button hit that like button it tells youtube that there's something of value in my content and they will help broadcast it to a, a bigger audience Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try growing garlic or onions next to your tomatoes. Onions and garlic are two of the easiest plants to grow. Just remember, you got to stratify your garlic. I have a whole video on that. I'll try to put a link in the description. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to continue doing my onions until this bed is full. 
and that bed over there is full of onions and garlic and uh have a great easter be safe stay home enjoy yourself stay away from your family i'm sorry gotta say it you know we don't want to spread this any farther than it already did i love you and i'll see you on the next episode A photograph in which we want love caught in your eyes, waiting for the sunrise. I barely even knew who you were. What did you do? I didn't care, cause you were perfect, I swear. But somebody told me that it's all.